Welcome to Melies the Story Collector Web TV, where each week we bring you inspiring stories from courageous individuals about the moments and experiences that have shaped their lives. In this episode, we're talking with the beautiful Nancy about what it truly means to live a fearlessly courageous life as she shares her amazing stories from her worldwide nomadic adventures. As we're traveling and we're staying in a place where I, you know, just went out to get stuff for a salad to the local vendor on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> and two women, as I drove in with my bag, said, oh, that's dangerous. And I'm going, dangerous? <laughs> you should have seen me with a machine gun on my lap one time. When I'm on a, you know what I mean? It's any little thing is intimidating for people yeah. and so one of the one of the reasons we uh, do this is to share that the world is a safe great place out here and you don't have to be full of fear about everything you know so that's beautiful and where did it start when did you first start on this journey well um I've been traveling, I guess, as a girl, I was uh, looking at National Geographic rather than Seventeen Magazine, and I've always been fascinated by the world, and at 12, my mother and I made a trip, and then at 17, I flew off to Mexico to learn a language when no one in my small provincial town had gone anywhere. 80% of the people who have lived in my town are still within 20 miles. Well, my class so no was. one gets out. <laughs> no, one, no one gets out, but that's cool because that's a whole different life and I respect what they, the way they want to live. But there is, what I've found is that there's a fear that holds people back. And I was always a personality that liked to just go and jump jump out and see what's out there. And so, um, you know, in, in university, hitchhiking across the country with friends and, and just doing all sorts of things, I started traveling basically at 17 and uh, traveled around the world with my kids, took them around uh, as a single mom for a year. You wow. know, through Africa, India, teaching English in Kathmandu. Was that always. difficult as a single mom? Yeah, well, what I found is it's not, and what my husband says also, it's not how much money you make, it's how much you don't spend that makes a difference in your life. Yeah. So if you're not buying all the latest doodahs, I'm not a stuff collector. And then that leaves money, even though I was living within my means, leaves money to do things that I like to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then I met my husband, at uh, my second husband, uh, 19 years ago at a funeral, of course. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the place you pick and, up. <laughs> I mean, come on. And uh, he had already started towards moving overseas. My youngest, my son, was off to university. And it was time for me to, even though I had traveled all through the years and my kids were raised traveling, um, I raised them to be very independent. Um, it was time for me to go off and uh, explore the world more. And I found a partner to do it with. And uh, we went on a long honeymoon to Sumatra, to Kashmir, and two months after we were married, when we got home, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Whoa. And the, doc the doctor said, you must come in, and I go, oh no, I'm in love, everything's fine, you know, and she said, no, you must come in. So, long story short, I ended up, we had to delay the trip that we were planning, and I fired the doctors because there were three of us with cancer at the time, the other two are dead, 
they went to the doctor and they chemoed them and radiated them surgery and, and yeah. Anyhow, so I thought there's got to be a better way. And I did a strict alkaline diet and uh, detoxing, cleaning out, juicing, raw food, and um, changed my life, looked at my stress level, which is major in this whole thing, and um, yeah, and just developed a new lifestyle. And that has become our travel insurance because we both became vegan. And oh, I was after 18 months cancer free. And during that, during that time, we're getting rid of two houses worth of things, uh, selling and giving away down to five boxes each from two houses was pretty major. Wow. And uh, we did digitized our life and uh, away we went. And, and we've been traveling continually for 16 years. Wow. We're in our 17th year. So, yeah, a success story, I guess. That's and uh, but what I what I what I found when we were going to travel, the first question we had good friends, of course, and family, and it's when are you coming back? And finally, my husband, out of frustration, said, "In 25 years." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we um, we've just been on the road and. It, when you're doing something like this, people, I don't know if they're threatened, jealous, I, I don't know what, but rather than being happy for you that you've planned your life and worked around it, live overseas, be a nomad, often there's, oh, but what if happens? What if this happens? But you won't have, and aren't you afraid of? And it's just a continual dialogue of, what are you, aren't you afraid? And we just kind of went, whoa. I mean, I'm sitting here in Bali. It's on the, uh, the uh, in, not in danger, the uh, dangerous list for the U.S. because Indonesia has terrorists. You know, I mean, come on. You must, you go, yeah, once in a while you end up in situations that you need to be careful of and move aside possibly. But the world is just, you know, the Balinese, the Sumatrans, the, in Africa, we spent four and a half years in Africa. We spent a year traveling around Australia in a 76 combi, camping the whole year. Um, you know, a year in India, uh, two and a half years Central and South America. And we just love people. And we, you know, they're great everywhere. And so this whole fear thing, especially in the U.S. after 9-11. There's this, the society is totally based on fear. Mm -hmm. And I started doing a website because, can you believe, 16 years ago there was no Facebook? <laughs> it was, you couldn't attach photos to email? So I started, someone convinced me, and we still have this website, World Globe Trotters, and we have like 200,000 people a month looking from 120 countries. And I continue because I get kind of, eh, you know, it's a lot of work, a couple days a month. Um, I continue because we're just sharing the truth with people, what it's like. It's a wonderful place. You don't have to hide under your bed and live in fear. And in fact, maybe back in our own home country, it's more dangerous than it is out in the big world. Wow, that's a big thought, really, that, yeah, where we're living now is more dangerous than overseas. Yeah, yeah. You know, they say that in every situation it's either fear or love. And you can kind of step back because we're only changing ourselves. You know, we're only working on ourselves and what a job. Um, and, you know, let's say, am I operating out of fear or am I operating out of love? And, you know... How many times so much is out of fear? And it's encouraged by society. Yes. I mean, we've been, in, we've been in places where there have been, let's say, riots or disturbances. And we were there on the outskirts, you know, being smart, not right in the middle of it. 
and watched what was going on, and then we caught what CNN had to say about it. And they played the same little clip over and over of a couple people throwing a brick or something. But that isn't what happened. And they weren't terrorists. They were just people fighting with an oppressive force over them, you know, taking their farmland away, let's say. Yeah. You know, so it's what you hear on the media is mostly lies. <laughs> yeah. And once you realize that, you know, and that's one of the reasons we continue with our web page is because we, we try and share the world. We look for the good in the world and we find it. So do you think so. that do you think Western that society that way of kind of keeping us in a fear state? Oh, definitely. And you notice it when you're out and about. I mean, each time I go back to the West, to Hawaii, where we raised our kids and our kids are still living. Uh, and Hawaii is easy going. It's kind of a combination between the mainland and Bali, kind of, you know. But if you go to the mainland, there is a lot of fear. And I can relate less and less to life in the West. Because there is a control, even though we say there's not and we're free and whatever, we are controlled by social pressure, which is everywhere. But we're controlled by what the government says, little infringements on free speech, and you know, and it increases. And we're controlled by our cell phones, of which most people are addicted. My phone is off most of the time. I use my laptop, that's why I was like, Mally, how do I do this? <laughs> I want to make sure. Um, but we're controlled by environmental factors. And yes, you know, most people live in fear. Fear of keep us so that we don't have money, so we're afraid of medical care. So we're not self-responsible. I think people need to be self-responsible. They, they like to blame the government. Mm -hmm. let the government take care of me, have a doctor, let the doctor take care of me. If he doesn't do well, it's not my fault because I'm eating nonstop. It's his fault because he's a doctor and that medicine didn't work. Or a priest, they want to go to a church and have their soul, their spiritual life taken care of. And no, that's, you know, you need to be responsible for, and then you've only got one person to blame, not that you need to blame at all, but make changes and things work out better. Yeah. So, so through this whole journey, where has courage really presented itself for you? Um, I think just the going out and doing it, actually living the fact of becoming a nomad that um, when I go back to the West, it's this consumerism. What did you buy? What did you? I go back once a year or twice a year. And uh, that's the hard part, I must add, that being away from family and grandkids. But I, we go back every sub, summer to Hawaii, a vacation from our vacation. Um, we go back and see the kids in spring or summer holidays, and I go every other Christmas, a tutu Christmas. But, um, yeah, it's, I think the courage, the courage to actually just be out here and to not just talk about it, but to have integrated our life out in the world. We've become like global citizens, world citizens, and we love to see everyone and it's just, all they're doing is, um, you know, they want a little house, they want education, they want food on the table, and they're all the same. I mean, we're all the same creatures. Of course, then you get the greed and the this and that with human nature, and it causes problems. But the basic population, they're, they're just wonderful. And, and, and being you know, I mean, when you get rid of two houses full of things down to five boxes, it's like, wow, you know, there's a freedom there. And, you know, we can say, you know, courage 
well, I can tell you stories in, <laughs> in Africa, you know, or we stopped to look at a, uh, that's a different kind of courage, but uh, we stopped to look at a bull elephant by the side of the river. He was beautiful, enormous, like a big bus, double-decker kind of thing. And we pulled over, and as soon as we did, a monkey went on my husband's uh, mirror, and he's swinging like this, you know, and my husband says, come see this guy. So I get up, go over, and there's this monkey swinging. It's really funny. As soon as I leave my window, a big, the leader of the pack, came into the van. So here we are in a van in Africa with lions around. And I'm Croatian, sorry, my hands got <laughs> no, go all over the place. <laughs> and, and so I put my hands on my hip. He starts going through our cupboards. And oh my goodness. I said, you get out of here. That's my food. You can't have it. And we're having a stand down like this, right? <laughs> and there was some fruit hidden under a blanket on the bed. And he knew there was something in there. And so I'm yelling at him. And then when I, we had the standoff, he goes like this with his teeth. And they can take a good chunk out of it, right? So my husband said, let's get out of here. So we climb over the driver, the steering wheel, and out the door, come around the back. And guess who's come up from the river? The bull elephant with the big tusks, and he's standing two feet away from our van, watching the van going like this. <laughs> you know, not much goes on in the Serengeti. So, so and my husband goes around. I'll never forget again. He goes, I don't have time for you now. <laughs> and he just walks right by him, goes around, and bang, bang, bang on the side of the door, and the monkey goes, whoa, what's that? He takes off through the window. So, you know, we've had a lot of fun, a little bit scary kind of things go on. But um, yeah, that, that's a different kind of courage. But I think actually just going out and living your dream, it takes courage, you know? And, yeah. and trying to look at, traveling forces you into the now. You have no choice. You make all the plans and some strange thing happens that it's like this morning, I came here yesterday, I set where I would go and all this stuff, got a new password for the Wi-Fi, but I could come up here and the electricity's off. You know, I mean, it's just uh, living overseas is a whole different uh, ball of wax, you know.